Hi guys, I have a little science lesson for you. Um, our story today is called, What do you do when something wants to eat you? What do you do if somebody wants to eat you? I don't know. And I, I'm outside today on my hammock. Woo. Um, I also have some things in my nature box, some artifacts that we can kind of look at afterwards. Okay? All right. So this is called, What do you do when something wants to eat you? It has really cool animals and it's kind of like a little guessing game so I might stop and ask you some questions okay it says most animals face constant danger of something wanting to eat them eaten by other animals this book shows a few of the ways that they try to avoid their fate what an octopus or when an octopus is threatened what do you think they do a lot of you already know you got it what do you think they do yeah it squirts a thick cloud of black ink into the water, confusing the attacker. So not really to poison it or to hurt it, but just kind of to escape. It's like a smoke screen to get away from the animals that want to eat it. Okay, the bombardier beetle defends itself. Look at that little beetle. How do you think he defends himself? He's not very big. Do you think he stings? He does something kind of funny, ready? by shooting a mixture of hot chemicals from, from its rear end into the face of the attacker. It can shoot up to 500 times in one second. So it's like, shh, shh, shh. kind of shoots it out of his body. Yeah, I thought you guys would like that one. That's the bombardier beetle. All right, the puffer fish, when it's in danger, there's the puffer fish. A lot of you guys know what it does. What does it do when it's in danger? It wants, somebody wants to eat it. It takes in water and swells up like a prickly balloon, making itself impossible to swallow. He makes himself bigger and like a pokey ball, right? And then nobody wants to eat him. The glass snake is really a lizard without legs. When it's grabbed by the tail, what do you think that lizard does? He kind of does look like a snake, doesn't he? But when he gets captured by the tail, its tail breaks into many pieces, uh, small wriggly pieces. So yeah, ew, that would be kind of creepy, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, the pangolin protects itself. Do you see this guy? He kind of reminds me of an armadillo, doesn't he? He has the same kind of armor. What do you think he does? That cheetah wants to eat him or jaguar. What do you think? Yeah, just like the armadillo, he kind of rolls himself up into a ball, right? It says, by rolling into an armor-plated ball. Okay. Uh, let's see. The Jesus Christ lizard. Um, it can escape its enemies. What do you think? He's called the Jesus Christ lizard for a reason. Do you know why? Because in the Bible story about Jesus walking on water. Yeah, I think so too. There he is. He is walking on water, but really he's not. Listen to what it says. Um, he escapes by running across the surface of the pond and streams using its large feet and gr at great speed to keep it from sinking into the water. So he's really just running really super fast with some webbed feet and he looks like um, he's walking on the water. That's why he's called the Jesus Christ lizard because um, in the Bible Jesus walks on the water. So they kind of compare those two. All right, when it feels threatened, a hognose snake... What do you think he does? This is kind of funny, and other animals do this too. He rolls onto his back, sticks out his tongue, and plays dead. This is a good defense because many predators prefer to kill their own food. They won't eat dead animals. So kind of like an, um, oh, what are they called? Possums, they play dead, right? He sticks his tongue out and pretends he's dead. Good strategy. All right, a, uh, the brightly colored clownfish escapes danger. You know this one from Nemo. How does he escape? Ooh, I'm rocking on my hammock. By hiding in the poisonous tentacles of a sea anemone. The clownfish is immune to poison, but any other predator who follows is badly stung or killed. So they're protected from those poisons of the sea anemone, but other animals are not and they get stung. The hoverfly is a harmless insect without a sting. See him? What does he kind of remind you of? 
Yeah, it says, but it can protect itself from predators by mimicking. That means pretending to be something else. What's he pretending to be? Or mimicking. Yeah, he's mimicking a wasp. So he looks like he'll sting you, but he can't sting you. The gliding frog lives in, a tre in the trees in the forests of Asia. It can escape predators by... How do you think that frog escapes? Look at those legs. Yeah, I think he does too. Using its large webbed feet to glide as far as 50 feet to reach another tree. So see the webbing? He can use it to slowly glide down into another tree, right? He jumps and then kind of like parachutes softly down to another tree. When it spreads its wings to fly, the silk moth, do you know what happens with the silk moth when he opens his wings? Can you guess? It reveals two large spots. They kind of look like eyes. See how it looks like a bigger animal? Yeah, it says it reveals two large spots that look like eyes on the wings. These can startle an attacker and give the silk moth time to escape. So it scares the other animals away. That looks like a little mouse or something, doesn't it? Yeah. The, uh, let's see, the Javanese leaf insect looks like, what do you think this leaf looks, I mean this insect looks like? Yeah, he looks like a leaf. He looks like camouflage. It says he looks almost exactly like a real leaf. That's great. And actually in your packet this week on uh, our AMI, on our PBS show, it's talking about camouflage. This leaf insect, it says this makes it very difficult for the enemies to see it when he looks like a leaf and can camouflage. All right, the flying fish can escape danger. How does he escape danger? He's not really flying, but he does look like he's flying, doesn't he? He looks like he has wings, but it says... Uh, he can protect himself by leaping from the water, spreading his wing-like fins, and gliding as far as a thousand feet. So he jumps, spreads those wings, and glides down, and he kind of does look like he's uh, uh, flying. The blue-tongued skink can startle his attackers. What do you think he does? He's not the one that shoots blood from his eyes. There is a lizard that does that. This guy has a different attitude. What's he going to do? He sticks out his tongue, but look at his tongue. Yeah, he's got a blue tongue. That would scare me too. By sticking out its large, bright blue tongue and wiggling it from side to side. That would scare me. It says, what would you do if something tried to eat you? Hmm, what would you do? All right, so that's our book. And then in my next video, I'm gonna show you some artifacts, some objects that you guys can help me figure out what um, they can where they came from and how they might help some animals.